Hello, dear parents and families of Hofstra students. Welcome to the second edition of your Hofstra Vibes family podcast. I am Branka Krustik. I'm Director of Parent and Family Programs and Assistant Dean of Students at Hofstra. And I'm so happy to be joined by my dear colleague and an excellent professional, Dr. Mary McVeigh Noble, who is our Executive Director of Student Counseling. Welcome, Mary. Thank you so much. It is my pleasure to be here with you today, Branka. It is truly my pleasure, too. You know, Mary, we are working on a daily basis together, but I would like you to explain to parents what does student counseling do? So student counseling is a resource for any registered student. We offer free, confidential services to any student here, whether they're a commuter, whether they live on campus, whether they're undergraduate or graduate. We offer 10 sessions of cognitive behavioral therapy per year per student. And the next year, they get 10 more. We mm-hmm. always have free confidential consultation and referral. So if a student comes in and says, mm-hmm. I'd like to be seen mm-hmm. elsewhere, or I need specialty mm-hmm. services, we do that too. We also have an on-call crisis team. Mm-hmm. When we are closed, we're open 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Friday. So at night and on weekends, any holiday, our on-call team is live. They are trained to manage all levels of campus emergencies, and they communicate directly with me. We also have a wonderful offering this year, which is Timely Care. Timely Care is the nation's Mm -hmm. premier telehealth provider for college students. We have contracted with them so that your student is also eligible to receive 10 sessions of Timely Care. They have a service called Talk Now, which is on-demand mental health support 24-7. They will wait about three to five minutes if they log on and request a Talk Now session, Mm -hmm. and then Mm -hmm. they'll speak to a mental health provider. They can also have scheduled counseling sessions. Those are the 10 sessions with licensed mental health professionals in the state that they're in. And they can use this service when they're on campus, when they're off campus, and during breaks. All they have to be is registered. And it even actually, they can request care, talk now, if they're traveling abroad, studying mm. abroad. So we really have mm-hmm. an amazing service there that works complementarily with student counseling services. Mm-hmm to manage our students' mental health. We have groups and workshops, also free, and those are unlimited, and we collaborate all over campus. Mm -hmm. Can you give examples of the group sessions? Sure. So right now, we have skill-based workshops. We have Think Strong, which is a kind of primer in cognitive behavioral therapy. It's four sessions. It runs twice a semester. Mm -hmm. And we have Feel Strong, which is based on the principles of dialectical behavior therapy, which is there to help students manage emotion regulation, distress stress tolerance, and interpersonal Mm -hmm. effectiveness. So at this time of the fall semester, I get parent calls about missing their students, but also their students missing home. How can parents support their students who seem homesick, depressed, or anxious? So the first thing is having that open dialogue. And if you're talking to them about it, you're already winning. The second thing is asking them, you know, what is it that I can do from here to Mm -hmm. support you? Do you want pictures of the dog? Would Mm -hmm. you like daily updates? Or are those difficult for you? Mm. And if your student reports that they're not eating, they're not sleeping, if they seem to really not be themselves, their mood is very low, or they have constant worries, then I would make a referral to us. Mm -hmm. And some students are not all that receptive. So if you call student counseling services, we might not have the ability, we might not have consent to speak to you. Maybe your student's already seen us and you didn't even know. So even if we don't have consent to release information to you, we can always receive information Mm -hmm. from you and you are our best partners. So call us if you have a concern about your student and we will manage outreach from there. Am I correct, Mary, that privacy is the basis of your services? You have to protect the privacy of your patients. But I also understand that we include parents as partners, as you mentioned. Yes. So when would you call a parent? If there is a dangerous situation where the student's life is in danger or the student is really not functioning, we'd always try to speak to the student and say, hey, we'd like to call your Mm. parents so that we had their assent. But in those situations, we don't need their consent to speak to you. We would always reach out to you. You mentioned that students have 10 counseling sessions per year. Yes. Can you explain what happens after they fill those 10 sessions? How do you help our students? Our goal is to make sure that every student who has a need 
has that need filled properly. So if they need more than 10 sessions, they need a higher level of care, we connect them to one of a network of community providers who may be offering something more consistent or more of a specialty that they require. So we would work with them for another couple sessions Mm -hmm. to make sure that they were properly set up with another provider. Transition from high school to college is a great one, right? And, you know, what young people of 17, 18 year olds expect to happen in college really doesn't happen or it's much more amplified and they feel overwhelmed. At that point, they sometimes shut down and parents know that something is not right. At that moment, what is the best way to parent? In my experience with my children, it would be asking them the good questions. Can you give us so examples those Socratic of the questions? questions. Yes, 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 right? Yes, Leading yes. them to water. So it might be like, you know, our senior vice president, Jessica Eads, mm-hmm. when she talks to all of you at orientation, mm-hmm. says you hear that voice, right? You know mm-hmm. that something is amiss. And you say, hey, well, first observe it, just non judgmentally. Mm-hmm. I noticed that you sound and reflect back to them what you mm-hmm. heard. You sound really sad or you sound very stressed or very worried or you just sound exhausted. What's Mm -hmm. happening? Mm -hmm. Right? So what's happening is a great question. And sometimes you'll be met with nothing. Mm -hmm. However, it's always okay to probe and to say, you know, here's why I'm concerned. It sounds like you're Mm -hmm. very tired. What's your sleep like lately? Mm -hmm. Not are you sleeping because that's a yes, no, but tell me what your sleep has been like lately. Mm -hmm. You know, what time you're going to sleep when you're waking up? Mm -hmm. How many hours night do you think you might be spending in bed? It's okay to say, hey, I know, you know, maybe the student has had concerns mm-hmm. around eating before, right? Hey, tell me what your meals are like. What's what's your meal schedule? What are you eating? Mm-hmm. Are you liking the food? You may ask, we all know our children's default behaviors, you know, when they're under a lot of pressure. And you can say, hey, how's that thing going? Mm-hmm. You know, what are your classes like? Do you like your professors? Tell, like rate them, rank them, you know, t- one to five, your top to your bottom. Bottom. Mm-hmm. Um, how are you connecting socially? What mm-hmm. are you doing to connect mm-hmm. socially? Mm-hmm. You know, some students will say nothing. Everybody here is mean, which is so untrue. We have a wonderful community here. So ask them what they're doing to connect socially. And if they're having trouble, say, I think you can. we can help connect you to somebody who might be able to help you more than I can from here. Mm-hmm. And what I uh, noticed, and my son is exactly the example of, yeah, oh, fine, I'm fine. That, that, that's probably the uh, most common answer that I get. What I noticed is that when I share my day with my son or talk about grandma, grandpa, what's happening at home, that also helps, not just interrogate and ask right. questions. Of course. Yeah. Keep them in the mix. Right? Yeah. Because sometimes yeah. students feel very distant and keeping them in the mix, like I said, send pictures yeah. of the dog, <laughs> you know, um, snap pictures exactly. of your meals. For some students who are a little bit homesick, that can be harder. So yeah. ask them, what helps? What do I yeah. do that helps you? What makes you feel good? You mentioned that parents can always call and, always. and give their information, what they would like you to know, you professional therapists to know. Uh, would you be able to share the number that they can call? Sure. If you have questions or concerns, please reach us at Student Counseling at 516-463-2273. Again, 516-463-2273. Thank you so much, Mary. I'm so grateful you are here for our new podcast for families. My name is Branka Kristik. I'm Director of Parent and Family Programs, and I invite parents also to always, always know that I'm here for you. I work in the Dean of Students office. The Dean of Students and all our staff, our student staff are here for you, and I will leave you with our contact information. It's parents at Hofstra.edu or 516-463-4698. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. So this is all for your Hofstra Vibes family podcast. See you next time.